Hey, Noel here from Rittenhouse again. I've got uh, a VDR50 regulator. It's used on several pumps that uh, are fair size. It does attach directly to the pump and this is what creates the pressure. Now to start with, the gauge should always read zero when the unit is off. If it's not, simply grab a wrench, twist the gauge out and replace it. After that, there may be a problem with the ball valve. If you shut it off and it's still leaking, you simply just grab a wrench, turn the handle up, break it free, twist it off and replace it with a new one. That's the most simple maintenance on this unit. Okay, now one of the other problems that can happen is that you lose pressure. That's caused by the seats getting wore out that are inside. There's actually two parts. I'm gonna show you the front part of the main seat and of course the back part where the secondary seat sits. Now first of all, what we'll do is we'll take the top off. You take the red handle, twist it to the top end so the tensions off the spring. Allen key, break it free and take the bolts out. Okay, now this is the last of the four bolts that hold this main piece on. Take it off. Okay, now we have it separated. What I'm showing you right now is the steel seat and the diaphragm that are in here. The steel seat, if it's war, you will see grooves and cuts in the metal. The diaphragm will turn a different color and start cracking, which will cause leakage up through the reg. Also inside is this little spring. It helps push it back off when you relieve the pressure on the red knob area. It is important that you put the spring back in the same way you took it out. The seat has two different size openings on each end of the spring. And once you've got it apart, you'll notice that there's another seat, looks like a funnel sitting inside. This also wears and gets cut away. To remove this, we need to take the nut that holds it on from the back side. The brass nut here, you'll need a good size adjustable wrench. Get a good hold on it, break it free. Once you're breaking it free, just un unturn it. And inside you'll find like a reducer plug. Either way, this can go back, doesn't matter. It's all the same on both ends. Now you'll notice, hopefully, that you have just a flat spot in here. That's the bottom half of that seat. What you're going to do now is turn it back over this way. You're gonna take a piece of brass, set it on the top and push through. When it comes out, you'll see an O-ring and the other half of the seat. If any of these are wore, you always replace the O-ring when you take anything apart. Okay, now to remove the seat, there's a couple of things we have to do first. First of all, there's a little snap ring on top that we have to remove. and take the handle off. Exposing the shaft. You need to hold on to that with a pair of water pump pliers. 
gently, not going to cause any problems if you put a little score in it. Now the Allen key I'm using is the same Allen key that took the body off. You break this free by turning it off. That way you can replace the diaphragm if need be. Take the screw out and replace the seat. Now basically all you're doing is going to put it all back in reverse order. You put the screw back in, put the diaphragm. One thing you should be aware of, the seat has a little lip on it. This is where that spring rides, so this has to face out. The diaphragm has a flatter surface on it on one side. That side goes into the body. And one th another thing to be careful about is not over tightening that screw because the body that it does screw into is plastic. Grab a hold of it again and give it just about a quarter of a turn. And that'll reseat everything. And then of course, put the top back on and, the sp and your uh, spring. And now you're ready to reassemble the whole unit again. Now that you've got your new seat, this goes in first. So of course you turn this back over. Put the steel seat in first. Give it a little tap with your piece of brass. Make sure it's seated. And drop the O-ring in. Give it a little push with your fingers. Restrict your valve, push that back in. Thread the back side on again. Tighten it up. And you're ready to reassemble the front side. Remember what I said about the spring having a large hole and a small hole. As you see, the large side actually almost goes over that lip. We don't want that. So always make sure that you put the small side and you see that it fits nice and snug. Hold it like so. Slide it back in 